Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So this is another installment of the series about the ABQ box camera, which is the version of Afghan box camera that Ethan Moses and I have jointly designed. And I've just about got all the elements of the camera worked out, all the details. And I actually did a test run on it last week, and I'd kind of like to describe for you all the features and how to use the camera. I did an initial series of portrait tests using myself as a subject, so this was strictly a solo venture yet last week when I tested it. And I was simultaneously, I actually violated the law of simultaneity in space-time physics because I was actually simultaneously adjusting focus and composition and also being the uh, subject matter in front of the camera. And of course, the way you do that is a little secret to that. We'll show you there in a few minutes, but stay tuned. So starting with the front of the camera, the lens board and the lens board holder brackets. I have two lens boards. Ethan cut me two of them. Uh, this one has a hole fitted for a Kodak uh, Ektar graphic style lens with an old woolen sack shutter. And the other one is for my modern Fujinon uh, 135 lens. So there's the lens board. And I'm using a long shutter release cable, which is actually important for when you want to violate space time and take portraits of yourself. So anyway, that mounts right there. And I really like the way when you, if you get the locking nut set properly on these bolts, the uh, brackets slide very easily and they stay in place. Well, one of the most prominent things you'll notice on the back of the camera now is an arm sleeve. That's right, a black fabric arm sleeve. And it's attached via a flange. Well, here we are. We are making the arm sleeve. And so I have a piece of nylon fabric, black on one side, it's actually silver on the other. And I've wrapped it twice. So there's two layers of it. And so there's an inside hem of gaffer's tape and an outside hem of gaffer's tape. We're using ProGaff, two inch wide ProGaff gaffer's tape. And then I've reinforced one end of it inside and out with several layers of the gaffer's tape. And then I've cut these little notches here. There's eight mounting screws on the flange that mounts the arm sleeve here. And I already have some M3 machine screws coming through here. And I've basically poked the holes in one at a time. So the screws go through the middle of these tabs. I've cut these 90 degree angles out here so that it'll spread out. So I have one more to go here. Okay, let's see if I can do this on camera without bleeding too badly with this X-Acto knife. So you kind of have to find the hole here and start a pilot hole with the X-Acto knife and then you have one of these here punches that you can taper out the hole a little bit wider and then your machine screw goes in from the outside like that. Now we're going to try to get all these machine screws in the holes of the flange, the mounting flange. So I put a uh, M3 nut on each of these M3 bolts. Then I'm going to be putting some nylock M3 nuts on top of them to lock them in place. Okay, on the inside of the camera, on the bottom are my three uh, chemical tanks, developer, stop bath, and fixer. Ethan had built these from laser cut acrylic and they're solvent welded together. And then in the back is the paper safe. The paper safe is also made from laser cut acrylic. 
and it has a hinged lid. The lid is hinged with several layers of gaffer's tape and the lid is secured shut. There are some rare earth magnets taped to the front side of the flap and then on the on the inside here there's also some more so it makes a nice secure lid that seals itself up and it holds four by five inch paper. Each of the chemical tanks holds about 400 milliliters of liquid, which takes it up to within about uh, half an inch or so of the top edge of the tank. And that's sufficient to fully submerge a four by five inch of paper if it's oriented in landscape orientation. Here I've taken out the whole film gate so you can see it a little bit better. So I've done a little bit of modification to Ethan's original design just to make it a little bit easier for me to use. Um, he originally had a couple layers of acrylic plastic. The idea of using your fingernail, you could pull this open, but my fingernails are generally pretty short. And so the rare earth magnets secure this ground glass view screen pretty tightly. So I found in my spare hardware bins a little metal clip that was used for these frameless picture frames and I bent the metal around, taped it on here and added an extra little magnet in here and it actually works really well as a handle just to pull the ground glass view screen open or close it with one hand, right? And then I also wanted the ground glass to only open so far. I didn't want it to fall down completely and so I had in my bin of miscellaneous parts, I had some little brackets that came with some audio amplifier. I think these were like mounting brackets, just some miscellaneous thing. So I mounted it to one of the screws that mount the rotating film back uh, together. Put a piece of tape up here to just protect the back surface of the view screen from scratches. And this is just the right height and size that when you open up the screen, it keeps it at just about the ideal angle, just a little bit a narrower than 90 degrees so you can slip a piece of paper in here it'll hold it nicely and you can close it up and be ready to shoot your picture and once mounted on these metal guide rods the film gate slides very smoothly back and forth and I set focus with a metal clip that I set on one of the guide rods that presets focus. Ethan designed this film gate so you can pull back this lock here and you can rotate the film gates so you can have a landscape orientation if you choose to but usually I use it in a portrait orientation because I'm typically taking portraits. There's another little change I also added back here on the arm sleeve and so what I've made is a weighted flap that enables you to when you pull your arm out of the arm sleeve this falls down and covers the arm sleeve opening so there's less chance of fogging the print sitting in the film gate when you insert and remove your arm. And I'll try to show you how this works. So you reach your hand in and you can place the, the flap up on this bracket right here to get it out of the way. And then you can do all your magic with manipulating the paper and the film gate and focusing. And then when you're ready to pull your arm out, you simply pull this down and pull your arm out and then that hopefully gives you a light tight baffle that keeps the arm sleeve from fogging the paper. And of course the flap doesn't go down too far. It doesn't interfere with processing the paper. So when it's up, it's out of the way. When it's down, it it's still above the level of the processing tanks. So there shouldn't be a problem interfering with processing the paper. So in order to take a self-portrait, you need a way to focus the camera when you're behind the camera. And so I use a focusing target. This is just a piece of matte board that I've painted black and white with some tape. Uh, there's a piece of gaff tape on it. And then most importantly, there is a string that I affix this string to the front of the lens board bracket. And then I use a yardstick, and for you people in metric speaking countries, that would be a meter stick, I assume. Uh, so a yardstick like this, and I can uh, stand behind the camera, stretch the string out all the way so it's tight, and so the target is in front of the lens. I can set the focus on the camera with that clip, and that presets the focus to the point where this string is uh, perfectly tight out in front of the camera. So what we're going to do here is we will loosen the top bracket, 
take the lens board out temporarily and I'm just going to stick this string down in here to the length that I need it to be for this for the distance I want to take my portrait at then I re-secure the lens board in place so I'm going to cock the shutter and then push that and that will open up the shutter in the lens so we can pre-focus next I'm going to tape the focusing target to the end of my yardstick or my meter stick depending on what country you live in and then with the string pulled out tight I will look through the peep sight door and adjust focus until right about there the target looks pretty sharp I'll set my clip to that point so if you're a do-it-yourselfer wanting to build a uh, Afghan box camera and you want to test it out in the portrait set, uh, setting, you may not have anybody willing to be your test subject. So you have to kind of learn to do it yourself. That's why I'm showing you how I do the uh, selfie shooting on an Afghan box camera. So assuming I've set focus as I showed you earlier, loaded a piece of paper in the film gate, pull the film gate back to the clip, remove my arm. I've metered my exposure and set the lens. Last week when I was doing this in north facing shaded daylight with Harman direct positive paper, it was f 5.6 at about two seconds exposure. So I used the bulb setting on my, my shutter. What I also am using is a reflector to fill in the shadows on the darker side of the uh, face. So what I'll do is I will have my shutter release cable within arm's reach. I will uh, put my focusing target up to my eye and then I'll move my head back and forth to tighten up the string and then I'll kind of center my head, kind of angle my head a little bit, pose and make sure I'm not too high or otherwise my head will be cut up, cut off on the top of the picture so I kind of want to crouch down or whatever to get my vertical position right and then um, once I think I'm set, I'm going to very carefully lower the target, not move my body, and hold this reflector up and press the shutter and count two seconds. And from there, it's a matter of just sticking my arm back in the camera and processing the paper. It's real important to take really good notes when you're doing these tests with your Afghan box camera, especially in the context of using either paper negatives or Harman direct positive paper because both of those papers are not panchromatic. They're not sensitive to the entire visual range, but your light meter is. So there's always going to be a difference or an offset between what a light meter suggests to use and what you actually need to use for proper exposures. Uh, when I was metering uh, this setting last week for these uh, prints, these tests, I was suggested an exposure of a half a second at f5.6 but that of course ended up being grossly underexposed so I did it just a series of tests went out to a second and then doubled it again to two seconds before I arrived at the right exposure and also for this selfie shooting with a focusing target it can still be a little bit challenging to get the right focus and for a two second exposure where you have to lower the focusing target and grab your reflector and get it set and trip the shutter, all of that could involve slight body movement and so there's still the possibility that you might be a little blurry, which I was in a few of these shots. But I think the, uh, the first shot that I got that I was happy with the focus and composition and overall exposure was this one here. So this one was not using the uh, handheld reflector so you can see the shadows like in my eyes and on this underneath my chin, the shadows are pretty dark. But I was pretty happy with the focus. My beard is nice and sharp. And of course the background is out of focus nicely. There is a fingerprint here from some processing artifacts. So that's always a problem to worry about. And then I was really happy about this picture here. This was just really super crisp. Eyes are nice and sharp. The focus goes out slightly on my ear, which is kind of the way classic portraits were done. Uh, I did use a reflector on this so you can see actual details in my eyes. My chin is not so dark. My shirt, of course, dark gray shirt is gonna be black with this kind of paper, but I was pretty happy with that. This is again, shaded north daylight. And then the final print I did that day was this, this one here. I thought this came out 
really the best of all of them in terms of focus and composition and exposure. Eyes super sharp. You can just see all kinds of detail in my eyebrows and my mustache. The focus rolls off nicely toward the back of my head and composition is really good. The only thing I think that detracts from it overall is there's a slight stain mark, this little vertical streak right here, and that has something to do with the developer. It was getting probably close to exhausted or whatever, or maybe I wasn't agitating it properly, but anyways, really happy with this picture here. I would be proud to make a portrait like this for anybody. Really cool. So regarding this folding camping table. I bought this a few years ago when I first started building my first Afghan box camera. And I noticed that this new design of Afghan box camera, because it sits vertically, it works really well on these lower side wing tables, which means that it's possible that Ethan and I can both do our individual cameras, one on each side, with each having our own subject matter to shoot, and we can use the shelves and the table in the middle as a common area for our rinse tanks and our chemicals and stuff. So it, I think it's gonna work out really well as a portable table for this project. We don't expect to be using only Harman Direct Positive paper in the future. We do wanna do the positive negative process, which involves using a printing easel in front of the lens to make a, a negative of the negative, a, a print in other words. The Harman Direct Positive paper happens to be fiber-based, and the problem with fiber-based paper is it takes a long while to dry, and it tends to curl kind of badly when it is drying. So this is one of the little solutions I came up with a few years ago. This is a plastic uh, storage bin. I have a uh, eighth inch thick sheet of steel that I've painted black, and I basically put this in the direct sunlight. If there's any direct sunlight close to where I'm shooting, I angle it like this, pointing at the sun, and in about 15 or 20 minutes, this uh, temperature in here will get over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then what I do is I can take a fiber-based print and I squeegee it with my fingers so that it's superficially dry on the outside without any standing water. And then I will magnet it to this hot plate, this metal hot plate in here, like that. And a totally damp, wet, Harman Direct Positive fiber-based print gets completely dry in about 15 to 20 minutes in using direct sunlight in here. So it's a little bit long for a, a customer a portrait subject to wait around, but if they want to and get a completely dry print, this is one way to do it. Well, just to demonstrate how quickly this little drying cabinet can get hot, I set it out facing the south in my front courtyard about 15 minutes ago. Now keep in mind this is New Mexico sunlight, a mile elevation, but we're about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's pretty toasty. That should dry a fiber print pretty quickly. And yeah, it's pretty hot. Since I did mention the reversal process for negative paper using hydrogen peroxide, or at least I alluded to it earlier, um, we will be eventually doing that same process in this camera and the way that would work is we would just have developer and stop bath in the internal slot tanks of the camera and then the uh, peroxide, the uh, rinse aid, citric acid and the peroxide and the rinse aid would be on individual trays sitting out here on the table in the open. They don't need to be in uh, a dark room condition. So I think this camera is gonna work fine for the uh, peroxide reversal process as well. Well, there's no better way to get skilled and adept at using these kind of cameras than to use these kind of cameras until you get really good at it. And so I'm not only gonna continue doing my selfie portraits, which Ethan jokingly calls the Infinite Joe series. We're also, him and I are both gonna be at attending various public social events this year and next year to try to get more skill in doing these kind of portraits uh, out in public and in various kinds of light conditions and all that and just learning to deal with all the variables that, that happen and come up. But I look forward to sharing all that with you in the future as it happens. 
But as always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. I'd love to entertain them. And also, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.